Okay, so I have something a little bit different in mind for this video, and I need to plug in my headset. Please hold. There we go. Okay. So, I've noticed that a bunch of other YouTubers are making videos based on how they would structure the MCU if Fox, or if, if, uh, di if Marvel Comics never went bankrupt in the 90s. So I'm gonna do the same. So here's how I would or, or how I would organize it um, in timeline order, of course. Um, yeah, here we go. So first up in the timeline, obviously, would still be Captain America, the first Avenger, because none of the rest of these take place before the '60s. I don't think. I think X Men. First class takes place in the 60s, doesn't it? Probably. Anyway, doesn't matter. So, Captain America, the first Avenger, would start off the, the MCU instead of Iron Man. And it would have been released in the 80s, but still be pretty similar to how this one played out, just not with Chris Evans yet. Uh, he would return, or he would uh, be modern day Captain America, not. Night, or World War II Captain America. Um, and the reason I would start this universe in the 80s is to incorporate something that we'll get to in just a, a few minutes. And then after the events of Captain America, the first Avenger, Captain America is in the ice, just like he is in the regular movie. And then we, uh, I would include Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Agent Carter in this timeline. So we have Agent Carter seasons one and two, and this is just the first season, uh, but we'd have season one and two set in the late 40s, early 50s during the Cold War. Um, the bad guys in it would be um, the Russians like it was for the Cold War and some mis miscellaneous crime lords. Um, and then jumping ahead to the 60s, we would um, we would have our first X-Men movie with X-Men First Class. And the only thing that would change in this movie is one, or well, a couple things would change. One, zero F-words. There's one in there existing. Two, Another thing that would change is they would be able to reference Captain America. Um, and Wolverine would be in Captain America, the first Avenger, as like a little cameo. Being like, hey, we can interact now. Um, and they would interact again with Wolverine's origin story, which would be similar to the one we got, but a little better made, I, I guess. Um, I personally don't think that X-Men Origins Wolverine was a terrible movie. Was it the best? No. Was it or was it terrible? I don't think so, at least. Uh, I think it was mediocre. Uh, it had some enjoyable ideas, like it was cool to see how Wolverine got his powers uh, officially, instead of just having like a flashback sequence or something. And um, it was cool to see his relationship with Victor Creed evolve from being like brothers fighting alongside each other to being enemies and, and Victor Creed would be the main villain of the movie. Um, I would still have Deadpool in it. However, it would be the one that was seen deflecting all those bullets in the early on in the movie and it would never become the one with the heat, I mean, with the, the bald one with the heat vision and mouth stitch shut. Uh, he was he would have heat vision off the get go though he would already have heat vision, which would be awesome I think. Um, let's see. Um, we would skip X Men Days of Future Past until in between Infinity War and Endgame because um, that I would have that one teach the Avengers how to do time travel, and then they would still do time travel the way they did with the Quantum Realm etc. Um, so next up would be, um, uh, the 80s with, 
um, with 1983 taking place for X-Men Apocalypse. Uh, it would largely be the same. Again, they would reference Captain America, and um, it'd be set in 1983 like it is existingly. And, um, yeah. When we do get around to having uh, Days of Future Past in this timeline, it'll be the Rogue Cut, because that's my favorite version of the movie. And then jumping ahead another three years to 1986, we would have Howard the Duck and um, taking place in 86, I should say. Also released in 86, I guess. Um, the rest of these would have been released so far in the early 80s, like 81. Um, but they'd still be up to the quality that they are in the real world. Um, with Howard the Duck, it would take place in 86, be released in 86, and then Howard the Duck wouldn't show up again until the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, where he has brief cameos like he does in the first two, at least. Um, so it'd kind of be treating him as the Incredible Hulk of the series, where he's never referenced again until the Avengers type thing. Um, then jumping ahead to the 90s, we have um, we have Captain Marvel, and Jean Grey is going to show up at the end of Captain Marvel in the post credit scene um, before she gets the Phoenix Force. And um, in this, they would be referencing the X-Men uh, and Captain America, naturally. Um, it would still deal with the scrolls, the flurkin, all that stuff. All that fun stuff. Um, so, yeah. That's how that would go out. Um, and then, set in the same year of 95, would be X-Men Dark Phoenix. Now, I said Jean Grey would show up at the end of this one in a post credit scene. And the way she would do that is asking Captain Marvel for, pe for help controlling her... her uh, new or her strengthening abilities because uh, she doesn't know how to control them at this point in time and then this one would deal with her becoming one with the phoenix force and, and the fallout of that and whatnot um so that is where that movie would go and captain marvel would be in it for the beginning and then she'd go off world doing her uh, space adventures and not seen again for a while. Um, and then up next we would have um, we would have Blade set in 1998 only it's not only uh, the only R ratings in this MCU timeline are going to be Deadpool 1, 2, and Logan. So this would be a PG-13 version of Blade. Same casting and all that, just uh, toned back a bit. And then um, following closely after that one would be Blade 2 from 2002. Again, PG-13. And then in between Blade Trinity and Blade 2, we would be introduced to uh, the the modern day X Men movies, the original X Men movie here uh, in 2000. So that would be set before the events of Blade 2. Um, and then we would also be introduced to this Hulk movie, which would star Edward Norton in this universe. Edward Norton would have two outings before the Avengers come along and cast Mark Ruffalo. Who did pretty well. Uh, don't like the person. Like him as an actor. And then we would have Blade 3 or, or Blade Trinity happen. Um, and um, Blade would be his own, his own thing. Uh, he would reference the X-Men a little bit. 
be like, hey, there are other heroes out here that could probably probably help me with my uh, my uh, vampire problems, but uh, you know, I'm uh, too sure of myself to ask for help, type thing. Um, and then that would take us after Hulk three or Hulk and um, Blade. We would move on to um, X Men Two, taking place in two thousand three, and we would also have had Tobey Maguire debut as Spider Man in Spider Man One for two thousand two, uh, which would be set in two thousand three, um, and so it would take place simultaneous to this uh, in different parts of New York. Upstate versus Manhattan. Um, and so, um, the Spider Man wouldn't be aware of the X Men, but he would know Captain America and Captain Marvel, or know of them at least, I should say. And then up next, we would have uh, the director's cut version of Daredevil being uh, acting as the theatrical cut, t still set in 2003. Um, with uh, two daredevils. In the beginning of the movie, it would be um, Ben Affleck, like it is existingly. But at the end of the movie, it would switch to Charlie Cox, who would play Daredevil from that point on. Um, so that would be pretty cool, I believe. Um, and then shortly after that, what they're set in 2004 would be The Punisher. And it, like Daredevil, it would go directly to the extended cut, with the theatrical cut being the extended version. Um, and uh, Punisher and Blade would be doing their own thing, only interacting with characters like Daredevil and each other um so that's how i would do that and then let's see here following the events of daredevil would be the director's cut version of electra i've only seen the theatrical cut of this so far uh, i've heard the director's cut is a bit better but um But it would be this version that would be in this alternate MCU time or version here. Uh, it'll be set in 2005, so we have a bit of a time jump there. Um, also set in, or in, set in 2005 would also be Spider-Man 2 with Tobey Maguire, and uh, in that the X or some of the X-Men like Cyclops and Storm and Jean would be helping Spider-Man to fight Doc Ock, and the Green Goblin did not die in the events of Spider-Man 1. He is therefore killed off in Spider-Man 2 early on, I think the first 20 minutes or so. Um, don't need to worry about that for now. Um, next up would again be the extended cut of the Fantastic Four, featuring this cast here. Uh, which is where Chris Evans would make his first MCU debut. Um, but he would return again as Captain America for the Avengers um, in this universe. And then um, set in 2006. Let's see, when would this one be set? Yeah, this one would be set in 05. Set in 2006 would be X-Men The Last Stand, and it wouldn't try and do a Dark Phoenix storyline. We would leave that to the Dark Phoenix movie. Uh, this one instead would lay the groundwork for the uh, Wolverine origin story um, and by loosely introducing the character being like, like a quick cameo like he had in, in First Class. Uh, 
so he'd be like, like, he'd just show up, uh, stab someone with his claws and be gone until the next, uh, or until his origin story is complete. But, uh, everything else would pretty much remain the same. They would reference the other characters, like the Fantastic Four, and Hulk, and Spider-Man, Daredevil, the Punisher, Elektra. All of them would be referenced. Captain America would be referenced. And then, moving into uh, 2007, happening at the same time in different places, we would have Ghost Rider, and I would have that set in California, as that would make sense to me at least. It would, again, be the extended cut version as or acting as the theatrical. And then happening at the same time over in New York would be Spider-Man 3, where Spider-Man gets the Venom suit. Uh, but it doesn't mess with his personality. It just, um, if he gets mad, it starts to take over. But otherwise, he's fully in control of himself and doesn't dance in, in front of a... Uh, Store having a big one sale. No moment. But uh, if you ask Spider Man into the Spider Verse, we don't talk about that. Uh, I did reference it, however. So, and then following the events of Spider Man and Ghost Rider, a few months later would be the events of Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. And the only thing that would change in this movie would be Galactus. He would not be a stupid storm cloud. He would actually be the big purple suited planet eater um, who's interested in devouring Earth. However, the Fantastic Four team up with Spider-Man and Daredevil to um, and the Silver Surfer has a change of heart to stop Galactus, where they succeed in doing so. And then you don't see the Fantastic Four again until after the events of the Avengers um, in Fan Four Stick. So we've already covered what would happen here. Um, so, yeah. And then... Um, to kick off 2008 in the MCU timeline, as well as release date, or release year, we would have Iron Man 1 and uh, Iron Man 2. Um, so we'd have Iron Man 1 and 2, and Iron Man would be aware of the Avengers, or, or not aware of the Avengers, aware of Captain America. He'd be aware of the X-Men, Spider-Man, Daredevil, Captain Marvel, Blade. Uh, he'd be aware of the Punisher and Elektra, Ghost Rider, and the Fantastic Four. He would be aware of all those guys, but none of them would make an appearance except for Nick Fury to uh, lay the groundwork for the upcoming Avengers movie, which will be still set in 2012, and, and the only changes be referencing these other characters that are now in the same universe as the Avengers are. And then after that, we have uh, set in um, set in 2008 with a few flashback sequences to the war, or to World War I, World War II, the Civil War, uh, the, even the Revolutionary War, and uh, the Vietnam War, Iraq War, all that fun stuff. Pretty much any war that America's been involved in, Wolverine will have been there. And uh, when it gets to a part about World War II, he'll be fighting alongside one Captain America and James Buchanan Barnes. Um, Bucky is presumed dead at the end of Captain America the First Avenger, just like it is in the real world movie. Uh, and he doesn't reappear until the Winter Soldier, where Wolverine has a cameo to help fight the Winter Soldier before figuring out who he is. Um, so, yeah, moving on, we have... Um, still said in 2008. Wait, where is it? We have... Oh, my goodness, where's Iron Man 2? 
Um, oh, here it is. Up next, we have still set in 2008 is the is Iron Man 2. And again, he would just be referencing other characters that have been introduced up to this point. Um, the first Hulk movie would still be called Hulk. Um, and then um, Nick Fury would be in this again, chewing Iron Man out like he does in the existing version. So, and then after that, we have Hulk 2, which will be called The Incredible Hulk. And it'll be very similar to this one, but reference the characters again, like Hulk, or like Blade, etc. And then we have uh, set in 2009 with the 2008 release, we ha we would have Punisher Warzone, which would be a direct sequel to The Punisher, just played with a different actor, but it would still be a, a sequel. Um, and he would reference Daredevil and Elektra and Blade. He wouldn't rec reference Captain America, Ghost Rider, or the or um, Iron Man or Hulk or those guys or Spider Man those characters. But he would interact with uh, Daredevil in his movie. Daredevil would help ha would help him out in one scene to fight um, to fight the bad guy of the film or a bad guy of the movie, whatever. And then we jump to 2011, just before the Avengers, um, or, or a year before the Avengers takes place, and we have the events of Thor 1. Um, th this time, they do not have a broken tripod camera, so there aren't any awkward leaning angles. And um, we, we don't reference any of the other characters that weren't already referenced in this, uh, which it gives Hawkeye his debut. Um, still played by the great Jeremy Rayner. He is awesome as Hawkeye. I would I would not recast him for anything. Because he did a phenomenal job. And then, still set in 2011, but releasing in 2012, uh, leading up to the Avengers, we would have Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance, which is the second Ghost Rider movie here. This one features Idris Elba, who is playing two roles in this cinematic universe. He's both Heimdall and a former Ghost Rider. Um, yeah, that's about all I have to say about that. Uh, he would reference Blade, Punisher, etc. And then Loki comes to Earth and decides to stir up some trouble and um, Black Widow is still introduced back in Iron Man 2. And then Hulk is recast in the Avengers to be Mark Ruffalo again. And who he is for the rest of the time, or the rest of the universe, until he gets, until he eventually gets too old and, get, and gives a role to someone else. But for our intents and purposes of this video, we're, we're going to assume that from 2012 on, Mark Ruffalo will be the Hulk. Um, a couple of the X-Men characters will be helping out the Avengers when it comes to the Battle of New York, but the rest of it will remain as is. Uh, Spider-Man will also help, help a little bit for the Battle of New York, mainly to protect Mary Jane, Gwen Stacy, Aunt May. Uh, Uncle Ben will not have died yet. He gets killed in, um... In the Battle of New York, actually, he gets killed by Loki himself, which gives Spider-Man uh, reason to hate Loki. Um, and then that would be the end of Phase 1. 
Phase 2 would begin with Iron Man 3, and it would deal with his PTSD of the events of the Avengers, and meeting mutants, and having to deal with, with that sort of thing. And then um, the Iron Patriot would be the real James Rhodes. But after the events of this, anyone that goes by War Machine is a scroll. And if they go by Iron Patriot, it is Rhodey. The real Rhodey. Um, Secret Invasion kind of showed that um, things weren't as they appeared to be. We'll put it that way. And then we would have set in 2013, just like Iron Man 3, uh, taking place a couple months later, would be the Wolverine, and it would be the, the extended cut. Um, it would still be PG-13. Um, again, no F-words until Deadpool. Um, but... Uh, there would be a little, it would be a little bloodier than it was, uh, like when Wolverine was getting that thing out of his heart, it would be a little bit bloodier, and like, every time he got, every time he, he stabbed someone, they would bleed for like three seconds, and then it would cut to something else to maintain a PG-13 rating, um, and then... Also dealing with the aftermath of the Avengers would be Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1. This one would take place after Iron Man 3 and the Wolverine. And would follow the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., obviously. Uh, cleaning up the Battle of New York. And uh, Adrian Toomes, the Vulture, would make his debut here as just your average cleanup crew guy. He wouldn't be revealed to be the Vulture until much later, uh, until uh, Tom Holland took over as Spider-Man. Excuse me. Um, yeah. I think I would make it a 24-episode season instead of 22, but that would just to be to flesh out a little bit more character development. And then up next would be the events of uh, Thor The Dark World, set in 2013 still. And Thor would be fighting Malekith and the Dark Elves. Um, but it would be a little well, m little more well done. And, um, and I've heard a lot of people say that it's too dry a movie and that the, char the villain is uninteresting, and I get it, he is basically just another ha a dark elf, um, curse, a cursed dark elf, that, that was actually really cool, and I love the black hole grenades, those would be used beyond this movie, in every Thor movie afterwards, every movie that Thor's in, I should say, um, which would come in handy for Thanos, um, but yeah, not much would change other than him referencing other characters like all these other movies do at this point. And then we have Captain America the Winter Soldier, also dealing with the aftermath of the Avengers, but he's dealing with it in his own his own way. And um, this sees the return of Wolverine and the, um, Bucky. Wolverine helps in the final battle aboard the, the Tri-Carriers. Uh, he helps to disarm them, to destroy each other, or to, to destroy themselves, basically. And um, Falcon is introduced. Black Widow is there again, just like she is in this. Um, Spider-Man, uh, Tobey Maguire, shows up to help. Then we we cut to again to Agents of Shield. This is and this would be the second season, following the fall of Shield and the rise of Hydra again, where Agent Ward is revealed to be Hydra, 
and a real dirt bag. Um, again, I would flesh it out a bit more to to develop character to do character development. Um, but I wouldn't change anything else story wise. Then we have uh, both taking place in 2014. Oh wait, hold on. Before uh, back in 2012, we have the events of the Amazing Spider-Man One. Uh, that happens pre-Avengers or during the Avengers before the Battle of New York, I should say. And Spider-Man is dealing with uh, the Lizard and his version of Doc Ock, who is not Alfred Milano. Um, Milano? Is that, is that how you say that? I think so. Anyway, it'd be dealing with a different Doc Ock because it's a different universe. Uh, we won't explain that it's a multiverse version of Spider-Man quite yet because uh, as far as we're concerned, everyone's in their, in the same universe, but Spider-Man's just been recast to be Tobey Maguire, or to be Andrew Garfield, while still having the Venom suit. And then we jump to 2014, where we have both Guardians of the Galaxy movies taking place, um, one after the other. We start off introducing the Guardians of the Galaxy, just like they do here. Um, the only characters that would be referenced in this from other things would be Captain Marvel shows up, and so does... Um, the Phoenix Force, before or after it has been expelled out of Jean Grey. And then, after the events of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, we quick, like about a month later, t or taking place a month, or like two or three months later, we have the events of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And... Um, with this, I would take out anything to do with the Sovereign, because I thought that was where they kind of lost me a little bit. It was cool seeing shiny gold people. But, um, yeah. I would also make Taserface actually be able to shoot tasers out of his face, because that sounds hilarious. And I would love to see something like that happen. Then in, uh, still in 2014, we have the events of Spider Amazing Spider-Man 2 with Electro and a new version of the Green Goblin who gets killed off at the end of the movie. Um, Electro and the Lizard both survive, but uh, and Andrew Garfield's Doc Ock gets killed, uh, never to be seen again, um, until No Way Home when both Doc Ocks show up and cause chaos. Um, okay, and then after that, we have a recast for the Fantastic Four, still following the same timeline, the same, uh, like the, the, it's still a third installment, but the existing cast has shown up in other things now. Um, the Avengers is the introduction of Steve Rogers, Captain America, played by Chris Evans. And he reprises his role in Captain America the Winter Soldier, and so he can no longer be the Fanta or the Human Torch uh, for the time being until the multiverse is revealed. So we have a recasted uh, Fantastic Four that is a much, much better version of this movie. Um, and Spider-Man helps up out as Andrew Garfield. And then we have um, set in 2015 and being released in 2015 like it was in the real world, Avengers Age of Ultron. However, this time, um, before we talk about that, we need to talk about how Ant-Man existed before Age of Ultron, and therefore Hank Pym helps Tony Stark and Bruce Banner create Ultron and Ultron doesn't turn evil until the end of the movie to appear in the beginning of Infinity War to cause trouble for the Avengers. Um, yeah. 
and then we have in set in 2016 we have the first r-rated mcu movie which would be deadpool 1 um and the only thing that would change would him, him referencing the avengers a lot more uh him teaming up with the avengers as well as the fantastic four and the original cast and he would team up with both versions of punisher uh ghost rider Daredevil, Elektra, and Blade, all of the, all of those guys would be present here, helping fight as as well as the existing cast, minus um, T.J. Miller. He would be out of the game because um, his character doesn't really contribute much to this to the the uh, plot of the movie, in my mind other than helping him come up with the name Deadpool. But we can have Spider-Man help him with that. And then set in 2016, still, we would have the events of Captain America Civil War. And this would, would also feature some of the X-Men and Spider-Man, but this time he's recast again as Tom Holland, who he is for the rest of the universe, or for the rest of the franchise. Um, and we find out that um, Aunt May is actually his mother, and Iron Man is, is his estranged father. We find out that Aunt May and Tony Stark were married before the events of Iron Man 1 and got divorced. Uh, when I when Iron Man went to do his weapons demonstration in the desert, and um, Spider Man will be unaware of Iron Man being his dad until the events of Far From Home, or not until the events of Infinity War, when he's like, "Oh hey, by the way, uh, I'm your dad," and Peter would be like. What? You're my dad? I'm loaded! That's not a very good Tom Holland impression. And then, following the events of Civil War, um, would feature Black Widow on the run like she is in this. Um, uh, we still haven't introduced the multiverse at all. Although you could, you could probably guess that it, it is around. We just haven't officially said that yet. We find out with No Way Home that Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are still Spider-Man. So is Tom Holland. They meet up. Tobey Maguire is the only one with organic webbing, and they they keep that all all intact. Um, and yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, then taking place shortly after Black Widow, we would have Doctor Strange one. And uh, Deadpool would be here, uh, also learning how to use magical powers, which would impact Deadpool 2. Um, yeah. Other than Deadpool being included, nothing else would change. He would still have the Time Stone. They would still mention, like, like, hey, these are the six Infinity Stones. There are cosmic threats out there that we need to be concerned about and protect Earth from, including Loki, because he's on Doctor Strange's radar as of Thor Ragnarok, which uh, does not happen quite yet, because up next we have Spider-Man Homecoming following the events of Captain America's Civil War. Um, Iron Man still works on clearing out Avengers Tower to move to the Avengers compound of upstate New York. But Spider-Man is able to do a little bit more than he did in this because he interacts with Iron Man a bit more. Excuse me. Um, and he interacts with Ultron a bit, who's starting to, to turn evil a little bit, but he's still fighting with or for the Avengers. He hasn't gotten a mind of his own yet. Um, Vision has been created 
and still hurt Rhodey in the events of Civil War. But that's okay, because it was Scroll Loki. Or Scroll, not Scroll Loki. Scroll Rhodey. Both have an E in the end, or sound in the in it. Um, and then leading up to Infinity War, we have the events of Black Panther introducing Wakanda after Black Panther himself was introduced in Civil War. Now we get to go to Wakanda. The events of this wouldn't change at all. It would just reference the X-Men a little bit with, with the adamantium also coming from Wakanda. Uh, but like 1980 or like 1970s Wakanda instead of modern times or instead of modern time Wakanda. Um, then we have the events of Thor Ragnarok leading in to Avengers Infinity War. But before Avengers Infinity War can happen, we have the events of Ant-Man and the Wasp, with a lenticular slipcover here. Um, and um, the reason I put this here is because it takes place during Infinity War, and the end of the movie is post snap. Then we have the events of Avengers Infinity War here. This is the Steelbook version. Um, not the Cinematic Universe edition, but I do have that right here. Uh, we have the events of, End of Infinity War here. And uh, Thanos comes, he wins. Uh, he has to go up against the X-Men, too, which is why he has the three claw marks on his face, because Wolverine kind of scratched him up a bit. Um, and then in between Infinity War and Endgame, we have Venom. Uh, we have Venom taking place in another universe. In, in Andrew Garfield's universe, with Tom Hardy playing Venom, and he would be a, he would have an awareness of Spider-Man, but he wouldn't try and do anything about that awareness until No Way Home, where he's like, "I need to meet the Spider-Man guy." Um, and then we would also have the events of Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Um, and across the Spider-Verse, because I'm pretty sure that takes place right after this one does, by about a year or two. Um, and then we would have the events of Date is a Future Past, the Rogue Cut, introduced the idea of time travel to the Avengers, but they still do it through the Quantum Realm like they do in the existing movie. And then we have Avengers Endgame with X-Men characters coming through the portals at the end of the movie. Because they also got dusted. And Daredevil, Elektra, Punisher, Ghost Rider, Blade. Those guys would all show up to help as well. So would Captain Marvel. Uh, Howard the Duck would have appeared in both Guardians Volume 1 and 2. In brief little cameos that have no impact on the story at all. And then, following the events of Iron Man's death in Avengers Endgame, we have Spider-Man Far From Home, where nothing really changes, except um, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are teased at the end of this when Quentin Beck mentions that he's from uh, a different Earth. Uh, introducing the multiverse, they'd be like, oh hey, and there's also two other Spider-Mans, there's Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker and, and Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker, and they are also Spider-Man, that kind of thing, um, but they wouldn't actually show up until No Way Home. Um, and then we have the events of Logan set in 2024, whereas Far From Home and Endgame are set in 23, in, in 2023. This is set in 2024. It, did, it still follows the R-rated um, Old Man Logan storyline and introduces us to X-23, or X-23, who ends up taking Wolverine's place because Logan still dies in the end of this movie. 
uh, not never not to be seen again until Deadpool three, whenever it ends up coming out, um, which I'm super super excited for. Uh, speaking of Deadpool, next up as the theatrical cut, we have the super duper uh, cut of the movie. And uh, Quicksilver is in it um, with Evan Peters. Aaron Taylor Johnson's Quicksilver is killed off in Age of Ultron like he is normally. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but uh, we have Evan Peters' Quicksilver and Elizabeth Olsen's Scarlet Witch in this. Um, they did reveal in X Men uh, Dark Phoenix that. Uh, Magneto is their father, uh, and their mother is a big unknown. Um, but um, I just read a little blurb on the back of the case here. Uh, it's a quote from Hugh Jackman saying, A work of genius. It is epic. I can't believe I just said that about Deadpool 2. Um, yeah. And then following the events of Deadpool 2, we'd have the PG-13 cut as well. Um, and then we would have the New Mutants set in 2026, where Deadpool 2 is set in 2025. And this would introduce all the same new characters that it does already, but it wouldn't be as... Um, I guess it wouldn't be a horror X-Men movie type thing. It would have a few creepy elements, but it wouldn't lean full on into the horror aspect of the movie like it does. And then we have, up next in the timeline, we would have Venom Let There Be Carnage, where Carnage does not get killed off, but Cletus Cassidy does. And Carnage um, infects a new host. That is just as as messed up as as Cassidy as Cletus Cassidy was, but um, Venom will think that Carnage is dead as well, and he isn't. And then uh, that would end off, or that would close the Infinity Saga, and to kick off the Multiverse Saga, we would have. WandaVision. Um, I know the case looks not great, but the picture quality is good on the disc. The disc also looks lazy. Um, but um, nothing would change here except Evan Peters would return to the MCU as Quicksilver from the X-Men universe into this one. And he'd be like, hey, I'm your brother from another universe, and in my universe, you got killed. In your universe, I got killed. Let's uh, be brother and sister. Help each other out. And then after the events of WandaVision, we would have the events of the other Marvel Disney Plus shows, like What If, uh, Loki. Uh, Loki would actually take place immediately following Endgame, um, dealing with when Loki disappears with the Tesseract in 2012. And then we would have Falcon and the Winter Soldier, uh, Werewolf by Night, um, Moon Knight, Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel would still tie in to the Marvels whenever it come whenever it is released in November. And WandaVision would introduce us to uh, an adult version of Monica Rambeau, where she's all grown up, and now she has powers from going through the hex three times. Um, and then we have, after all those shows, we have the events of Spider-Man No Way Home, officially introducing us to the multiverse beyond what Quicksilver had to say. And... Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield show up and help Tom Holland fight all of their bad guys from Green Goblin. 
to both versions of Doc Ock, to the Lizard, the Sandman, uh, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man 3's Venom, as well as uh, Electro. And it would feature the, de the debut of the Hobgoblin, Jason Philip McIndale. And then after that, in uh, the same universe that Venom takes place in, we would have Morbius with the lenticular. Um, and Morbius would just um, add to the Venom universe. He would be aware of Venom. He would reference Venom. He would try and scare someone by saying, I am Venom, uh, which would give it away that he isn't Venom because Venom would, wouldn't say, I am Venom. He would say, we are Venom. And then after that, we have taking place in the main MCU universe only is, or, and the other pocket dimension that they end up going to at the end of the movie, is Shang-Chi in The Legend of the Ten Rings. And in this, the true Mandarin is revealed after the, fake, the two fake ones from Iron Man 3. Um, and uh, Trevor Slattery ends up getting killed by the, regular, by the real Mandarin. And, um, and then they go to that other dimension thing where, um, where Shang-Chi's mom is from and they fight the big old dragon, but it's a more, um, more personal fight, has more personal stakes for Shang-Chi. And then we move into the events of the Eternals, which is still dealing with the world after the blip, um, where people have returned and a new celestial is being born in the Earth's core. Uh, they still or stop that from happening, but uh, the X-Men help, Spider-Man helps, um, Venom helps, uh, Tom, Tom, Tom Hardy's Venom, I should say. And then... Uh, we move into the events of the Multiverse of Madness right here, where they visit more worlds than just 838, whichever one uh, the evil Doctor Strange was in. I think they call him uh, Strange Supreme or something. Uh, they would go to, to more than just his world, 838 and 616. They would go to Tom Holland or Tobey Maguire's universe. They would go to Ghost Rider's universe, Blade's universe. Uh, they would go to the X-Men's universe and interact with a bunch of those different characters. Wanda would still be antagonistic and see the error of her ways in the end of the movie and destroy the Darkhold um, where it's carved in stone and survive by creating a giant energy barrier around her to survive the debris falling on top of her head. Um, a piece of debris does hit her, but it doesn't deactivate her shield after she, but it doesn't prevent her from activating the shield. She then becomes unconscious and isn't seen again for a little while. And then we have the events of Thor, Love and Thunder, where, um, where when Zeus removes Thor's disguise, it does not make him very naked. It makes him uh, in this outfit that we see him in, in on the cover here, instead of the cloak that he was using to conceal his identity with. Uh, Valkyrie and Jane Foster also take off their disguises at that point, as does Korg. Um, Korg ends up dying at the end of the movie and not being reborn, he is fully dead. Uh, excuse me. And then, what the heck, the battery has an X on it. Anyway, I got distracted. And then, the last movie in the franchise so far, the last two movies would be uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, uh, taking place in the quantum realm like it does. And uh, there would be one more show before now and another special special presentation. The special presentation would still be the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. Exactly as is, nothing would change at all except Adam Warlock would be 
shown in a post credit scene. And um, let's see. And then we would also have um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I haven't gotten that one yet. It is available, but I haven't gotten it yet. As, as, as is the case with Across the Spider-Verse, I have not got it yet. But I will be triple formatting it on the 30th. Uh, I'll be getting the Blu-ray, or the 4K, the Blu-ray, and the DVD all separately in the same transaction. And then, um, yeah, Guardians 3, again, uh, I would take out a lot of the, or I would take out the F word in that and leave that to Deadpool and, and future Wolverine movies. Um, and then, uh, in the last, in the final moments of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, since Dave Batista wants to be done with comedic roles and physically demanding ones like Drax, um, Drax the Destroyer would be killed off, but the rest of the Guardians of the Galaxy would be intact, and uh, Star-Lord would have convinced Gamora of the past, which would be her future technically, because it's the post-Endgame 2014 Gamora. He would convince her that the two of them got together, they were very much in love. They end up getting married, and they have a kid. And uh, this one is set before Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania because their kid is the version of Kang the Conqueror that is stuck in the Quantum Realm. Plot twist! Um, and yeah, that is how I would structure the MCU if I were to redo it. I would have it begin in the 80s with today's quality and have all the different Marvel franchises interacting with each other with Punisher, Ghost Rider, Daredevil, Elektra, Fantastic Four, Howard the Duck, uh, Captain America, Deadpool, the X-Men, all of them interacting with each other throughout the franchise. And next movie in the franchise after Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 would be a show, which is Secret Invasion. Revealing that Rhodey has been a scroll as long as he's referred to himself as War Machine post Iron Man 3. And then the real Rhodey will be the one that kills scroll Rhodey being like, hey, you stole my life. I'm gonna kill you now. Type thing. Um, and yeah, that is it for this video. Um, I'm going to do something similar for the DC Extended Universe fairly soon, but for today, that is all that I have for you. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you, if you do enjoy this video, be sure to like, uh, maybe leave a comment about how you would structure the universe. If you could redo the Marvel Cinematic Universe to include the X Men, etc., and uh, spread the word about my channel. Uh, if you know people that are movie buffs, be like, "Hey, you should check out this kid's channel." Or this, I'm an adult. Uh, check out this guy's channel. He talks about movies. He he reorganizes franchises according to how it would make most most the most sense to him etc. And then, um, yeah, um, and keep talking movies, of course, and have a good rest of your day. I am going to be signing out here.